What's up, everybody? This is Newt Mayenge, and welcome to the league. Today's topic is on forced sterilization, and I couldn't have this conversation with anyone other than my next guest. She's not only an amazing actress who has won Best Actress in a film festival, she's also in a film that just so happens to be about the topic that we're discussing today. Everyone, I would love to welcome good friend and actress, Laura Santa Cruz. Hey, Laura, welcome to the league. How are you? I'm so good. Thank you so much for having me. Thank I'm you. excited to be here. I know. <laughs> Thank you for coming. How, how are you and, and the family doing? Is everyone safe? Everyone is safe. Um, we're doing great. I live with my husband and we've just been in quarantine for the longest time, which I'm sure you know all about. Um, yes. But we're, you know, times are weird, but we're adapting and it's pretty much all you can do really is just kind of go with the flow, right? So yeah. I think things are getting a little bit better though, right? I would think so. <laughs> I would like to think so. Right. Let's yeah. just say they are. Yeah. yeah. Well, the main reason I wanted to have you on today was our topic is on forced sterilizations. Mm -hmm. And it's a very big topic that's been going on. And, and um, before we do this, I want to make sure that we create some form of history that people know uh, right. from the U.S. standpoint on mm -hmm. where it's come from and where it originated. This is by no means a, uh, a comprehensive history, but just a little summary to talk about the origins. Right. So, you know, and, and I know that there's been a whistleblower that happened in Georgia which was Thank one of you. the biggest things that just recently came up. And uh, the woman's name, she's a nurse. Her name was uh, Don Wooten, I believe. Mm -hmm. And she stated that there was an issue of some immigrant women there who were forcefully getting sterilized. Right. Um, involuntarily. Involuntarily, yeah. They're, uh, you know, in the detention center and they're complaining about maybe a, a, a small cramp or some type of a, the the one that I read about, she was having pelvic pain, mm -hmm. and uh, they sent her to the gynecologist. Wow! And from there, she was she had a hysterectomy involuntarily, and they said, uh, well, "You have all these cysts, and if we don't take them out, you can die," which was absolutely not true. Um, <laughs> they're just it's history repeating itself, basically. That is crazy to me. Yeah. Uh, uh, just to kind of kind of look you know back in history America's had a, a dark history when it comes to forced sterilization oh, yeah. I mean I know back in the 20th century that it was about 70,000 Americans who were forcefully sterilized yep. and then even if you look at um, some of the victims mm -hmm. uh, they included and I quote uh, people who were deemed mentally deficient mm -hmm. um, as well as the the deaf blind and diseased mm -hmm. and I know what, what is mentally deficient Efficient. I mean, I mean I in their words, it were would say. yeah, morons was a word. Yeah. Uh, stupid, unintelligent. Um, these were the 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 words that they used to explain some of these people. And it wasn't even that they're morons, that they're dumb, that any of that. It's just that they don't speak English. So yes. because they don't speak English, then automatically you're stupid and you. Uh, you have no right passing on your genes to anybody else because it's not the American way. Wow. So immigrants were highly targeted for for sterilization just because of that, and it's it's insane. It's it that's so un-American. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's crazy. It's been happening since 1910. Yes. In the research that I went on. Yes. So. Yes. And, and and I know if you go back to the Constitution, the Constitution states that everyone, it doesn't matter if you're a U.S. citizen or an undocumented immigrant, everyone should have the right to be treated fairly uh, through the due process of law. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's unfortunate. I'm trying to figure out why in 2020 uh, we're still dealing with these issues. Racism. Yeah. It's just straight evil racism. That's yeah. it, because they can get away with it. And the, the messed up part here is that, you know, we have bigger voices these days. I mean, with the help of social media, it's mm -hmm. really difficult to hide things. Yes. And, you know, it's it's like a good thing and a bad thing, social media, but mostly good because people can't hide anymore. Yes. And that's exactly what happened with this whistleblower. She just let it all out. Yes. And, you know, thanks to her, thanks to social media, 
Um, thanks to people that are finally standing up for themselves and coming to the light, you know, hopefully this is something that's not going to be occurring as much as it has been. I, I agree, and, and, and once again, I'm, I'm glad that we have the platform to be able to continue this conversation. And you've actually been involved in a movie Yes. Um, that's going into a film festival. Can you tell me about that in regards to yes. sterilization? Yes, um, it's just so crazy. She's a star guy. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so I actually had a very small role in this um, film. It is called... Guys, there are no small roles. <laughs> She's very modest. Uh, the film is called For Rosa. Okay. And it basically follows uh, the story of the Madrigal 10, which were a group of Latinas that, uh, with the help of a young Chicana lawyer sued LA County General back in 1975 I want to say um, because they were sterilized against their will and um, this was happening in the 70s where immigrants uh, not even immigrants even American Mexican women who just mm -hmm. didn't speak the language would go into the hospital go into labor and under just during labor, handed these forms saying that if they don't sign this piece of paper, mm -hmm. that their babies are going to die, that they are going to die. Basically, they were signing away their reproductive rights. Wow. Because because of eugenics, because of what happened back, you know, in in, in 1920, and uh, because of racism. You know, yes. the, it's it's history repeating itself. Like I said, and. They're just, they're, they, they have their rights being taken away from them because they're unintelligent. And, and the crazy thing is, is the judge who originally, you know, handled this case, mm -hmm. they sided with the women um, and then it was handed off to a 70 year old white man who decided no, we're, it's your fault because you don't speak the language. Yeah. And so we're gonna side with the physicians because there's no way a physician would do something like this, you know, if it, if it weren't the right thing to do. When these women were not handed forms in their native language, Spanish, yes. there are forms in English. And some of them, unfortunately, were reading at a sixth grade level, uh, you know, reading and, so they just they weren't they weren't given any information it was sign 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 mm -hmm. while they're in so much pain and so a, a lot of them too are currently in labor right in the yeah. in the waiting room and they say if you don't sign it you can't go in there so imagine you're 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 literally crowning begging for help and they're like okay well if you sign it if you sign it we'll let you go have your baby i i, I would probably sign it too of course. right yeah of course so it's like th this is these are the conditions that these women were put under so they just never had a choice and the mess up part is it didn't end there it didn't end at them not being able to to reproduce anymore it, it it went on to their husbands leaving them to some of them attempting suicide to families being broken up because they blamed these women for signing these papers it's like what did you do what did you do you know what have yeah. you done Yes. Because in the Latin community, family is everything. And yeah, they, they targeted Mexican women because they called us promiscuous and overbreeders. And it's, we just want a big family, you know? Yeah. This is what we come from. Yeah. And that's what we want to continue in the footsteps of our grandmothers, our great grandmothers. You know, I grew up living with uh, our immediate family. My grandmother lived next to us, my uncle lived upstairs. You know, like, it, it's. Just, we're just all about family and this is what it was. So to have that stripped away is, I just, it's just insane. And it's still happening to this day. So basically this is what this film is about. It's, it, it's uh, a fictional character, Eva. Yes. Played by an amazing actress, Melina Bobadilla. I saw the trailer. Who is on Orange is the New Black. Phenomenal. Yes. Phenomenal actress. Orange is the New Black, yes. And, and also, this woman is a social justice warrior. I met her on set. Mm -hmm. I mean, I got this cast list and I was like, oh my gosh, you know? Because um, Melina's not the only one, too. Um, but 
I met Melina Bobadilla on set and I was like, oh my God, thank you so much because she's such a huge voice in, in, in the Latin world. You know, mm -hmm. she's a strong Chicana woman. She, she grew up in East LA and, and she's just really, really involved in, you know, Latina civil rights. Yes. So, yes. and then plus um, Idalia Valles, who mm -hmm. I'm such a huge fan of, is the one who played Jessica the attorney mm -hmm. um, that helped the Madrigal 10. And um, Rick Mancia plays um, Eva's husband, mm -hmm. who was on East Los High. And when I met him, I was like, oh my God, why do you look so familiar to me? And he's like, oh, I was on East Los I was like, oh my God, can I give you a hug? Like, such a fangirl, you know? And I'm just like over here with my big pregnant <laughs> belly because I did play a, a pregnant woman. I yes. was not one of the, uh, the 10 who was, who, you know, suffered through this. I was kind of the, the comedic relief for the film because it's just such a heavy film that you needed a little something, something yes. in there. Otherwise you would just be like, oh, this is this is a lot, you know, but I think the writer uh, slash director did such a great job with this. Uh, Catherine Boyd Batstone, this was her thesis project mm -hmm. and um, super excited because we're we just got into uh, Urban Film Festival. So Congratulations. thank you so much. It's yeah, phenomenal. yeah, it's just it sucks because you know this whole thing happened and we were literally about to have our um our premiere, premiere. is this red huge, carpet event every like the whole nights you know yes. my agent my manager was like yes yes uh and then COVID happened ah uh, COVID uh, you are horrible and you, you suck horrible um no but i mean again thanks to social media and everything we're able to do you know live premieres which is what we're doing yes for urban urban world film festival so and take I, what I, you get <laughs> i know i know that had to be dear to your heart because of the nature of it one two and, and i want to make sure that this is known from a male's perspective that um, by no means it uh, is there anyone's rights that should be taken mm -hmm. away so, family size has nothing to do with anyone else no one determines no. that in my opinion, no one determines a woman's right to either have a baby or not have a baby. That's her choice individually. Exactly. And if she makes that choice, that should be something that she consciously decides to do, not being manipulated into doing. Um, and I wanted to make sure that that was, that was known from, from my end, from a male's perspective. Thank you. Of course. And like, it's crazy because you say, I am passionate about this, but I'm not going to lie to you and say that I knew anything about this before I got this audition. Yes. You know, as actors, I know you know, we get a role and if it's a true story, what's the first thing we do? We get on the computer and we start doing the research. Yes. And I'm like, what is this all about? And I started reading about it and I'm like, how the f do I not know about this? Yeah. This is my people. How do... how? How is there... There was one YouTube video when I did my research on the Madrigal 10. And the transcript, the court transcript. Yeah. Which I was, I'm reading this transcript and I'm like, what, what? Because the terminology is just like goes way above me, you know. So this one, one video on YouTube. But that just I, goes to show how it's been swept under the exactly, rug. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. They just push this all the way down. Yeah. You know, and I was just so embarrassed, honestly, that I didn't, that I had no clue what any of this was. So. I'm just so grateful to this film because, you know, I I just know so much now and I'm just so grateful to to Kat, the writer slash director, and it, it was like the shout whole, out. shout out Kat, I love you. <laughs> um, but it was just, and also like being on set, I never have been on set mm -hmm. with so many brown people. There's just brown people everywhere. And I'm like, oh, every kind of Latino that you will ever, you know, Mexican, Guatemalan, Puerto Rican, uh, El Salvador, Chile, like everybody was there. And I'm just like, everyone's like doing this on set, you know, like, oh, <laughs> like, you know, like, yeah, it. literally flying off the sea, you know, like, yes, it was just like the overall experience. Yes, it was such a heavy experience. Yes. But man, I learned so much. Yes. And I just, I'm just so grateful to, to Kat, to the Magical 10, and I just want to continue, you know, and I'm so grateful to you, to the league Thank for you. inviting me on to, uh, to giving us another platform to talk about this because we just, we can't let it go like Absolutely. we have in the past. Mm -hmm. We can't, 
we have to keep talking about it and talking about it. And I mean, this is happening right now in the South. Yes. It's even happening in Canada. Like, no, like this has to stop. This has to stop. So thank you so much for like, for having me on here and, and, and you know, letting us talk about this some more. Of course. Uh, what other projects do you have going on? So I do have some fun projects <laughs> that are coming up. Um, my range is all over the place. Like sometimes they want to kill me. Sometimes they want me to kill somebody, <laughs> you know, um, yes. my next project, I am actually playing a cult mother, um, in a horror film, horror. I always say horror by accident, <laughs> horror. Um, and I get to play a cult mother, which is kind of what, kind of why I got into this whole thing. Like, I just love the darker side of acting uh i am crazy i swear i just like to play crazy um, that's what we do as actors we have permission <laughs> to be a little right yes. to do this right here mm -hmm. soy loca. Un poquito loquita. <laughs> um, but yeah so um i'm just so excited about that like the the wardrobe everything like they went all the way out the writer uh, works uh for fx and he does all this crazy like FX all like I'm just so excited about it. Um so we it. have that and um I also have a commercial that's supposed to be shooting. It keeps getting put off because of COVID. Like yes. um but I am a, an esthetician also. Oh, wow. I wax bodies and it has a lot it has something to do with skincare. So I'm just all over the place. I'm killing somebody and then I'm helping people with their skin and the other. So. I love it though. And, you know, with our industry, that's kind of what we do. Right. That's just the, the nature. That's of why it. we do it, right? Yes. We just, but, someday you're this, someday you're that. But at the end of the day, we're, we're telling stories that people can relate to because there's yes. always an audience for every story that we tell. Right. Even the crazy folks, there's an audience. But, uh, you know, that's neither here nor there. <laughs> Exactly. Laura, where can everyone continue to follow you to watch all the amazing things that you're doing? Um, you can follow me on Instagram at O Santa Cruz, O H Santa Cruz. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Facebook, all my uncles and aunts are on there posting pictures you don't want to see about me. <laughs> so let's just keep it at Instagram at O Santa Cruz because the other stuff is really embarrassing. That is awesome. <laughs> Laura, thank you so much thank for coming so on the lead. Thank you so much. So, and we're all going to have to hang out after this. Right, yes. And start to get up, especially once this COVID stuff is done. We're yeah. being safe, guys. I promise we you. Are we are being safe. Yes. Um, in the meantime, take care of yourself. Thank we're going to you. continue to fight the good fight. Continue yes. to make everything um, known as far as this uh, forceful sterilization because it's very important mm -hmm. for, for people to start to understand that it's a big problem. And it's not going away unless we make it go away. Right. Exactly. Guys, Newton Mayenge, The League Talk Show. We'll talk to you soon. Be safe. Take care of yourselves and your family. We will as well. Signing off. Adios. Adios. So, Laura, you have a film that's going to be in a film festival this mm -hmm. weekend. Can you tell me about it and uh, what the name of it is? The name of the film is For Rosa, and it's a story that follows the Madrigal 10, which were a group of uh, 10 Latinas mm -hmm. that were sterilized against their will. And really, there's so many more Latinas, but it was 10 that got together to sue LA General Hospital. Um, and wow. it's a, yeah, it's a, it's super heavy. It's beautifully done um, and it's going to be showcased at Urban World Film Festival um, the 23rd through the 27th I believe let me just make sure yes September 23rd through the 27th awesome. and if you follow at Urban World Film Festival on Instagram and mm -hmm. go to the link in their bio you can um, purchase tickets through there and the cool thing is is the movie is available for 24 hours mm -hmm. there's also other amazing films that are going to be showcased so you buy the one ticket you get to watch all the it. films all the films yeah guys make sure you check them out please